Now we move to a question about a 31-year-old male that sustained a left elbow fracture. Um, a laterally based uh, incision is used to elevate the extensor tendons and the capsule of the lateral column. So the lateral column procedure was described for the stiffness, but it provides an amazing access to the anterior compartment of the elbow joint. So think about it. Which of these fractures that you see below would be best exposed by approaching the anterior lateral aspect of the elbow? is going to be a fracture of the capitellum. Why? Because visualization of the capitellum and trochlea is very well performed by elevating the uh, muscles that we discussed before. And if you need to, you can go posteriorly elevating the triceps as well. So let's talk about capitellum fractures for a little bit. These are less common than the classic uh, supra intercondylar uh, fracture, and most of the times they result from an axial compression with the elbow in a somewhat uh, flex position. And why are they important? Number one, they are intraarticular, so they can affect the congruity of the joint. Number two, when they're displaced, they will block motion. And number three, they have a reported high rate of stiffness, even with adequate open induction and internal fixation. Remember that not uncommonly there is other injuries. You can have a fracture of the capitellum and radial head or an LCL injury as well. And as we just discussed before, Residual stiffness is a very common complication, even when the patients ad undergo adequate fixation. And in many studies, there is a reoperation rate that can reach 50%, mostly due to stiffness. How are they classified? This is the Brian Moore classification modified by McKee. There is a type 1, which is the classic big chunk of capitellum. So you can see on the issue on your right how most of the capitellum has been sheared off, as opposed to the type 2, where it's just a sliver of. Uh, Carolates and bones, so this, this is more like an osteoarticular uh, fracture. And then the type 3 is the one that has a lot of combination of just the capitellum. Now, we now realize that uh, some of the distal humerus fractures that are articular shear will actually extend into the trochlea, and that's what Dr. McKee uh, reflected in his added type 4, where there is typically a double contour of the distal humerus that will show the capitellum and the uh, trochlea. This, uh, Patients typically present very similarly to a patient with a radial head fracture, so there is pain mostly laterally, swelling, and there may be a mechanical block, but it's mostly for flexion and extension. Uh, as opposed to the radial head, where the block is more in forearm rotation, as you can imagine, if the capitellum is flipped up, like we saw in those x-rays, it's going to block mostly flexion and extension. X-rays are very useful, but sometimes they are difficult to use to confirm the diagnosis. And as we talked about with the distal humerus fracture, I think a CT scan has become almost mandatory. These fractures can be treated multiple ways. So the ones that are truly non-displaced, if the displacement is at the most two millimeters, can be mobilized for three, four weeks to allow some healing and then range of motion exercises. However, the majority of these fractures are displaced. And in these patients, it is best to consider open reduction and internal fixation. Classically, the more simple fractures, so types 1, 2, and 3, that do not have medial extension can be fixed beautifully from a lateral approach. So if you use the anterior interval of the lateral column procedure, you can get great exposure for the isolated capitular fractures. However, if you have a fracture that extends more to the medial side, especially if it goes all the way across the trochlea or even to the medial epicondyle, it is important to have a more extensive approach and proceed with an olecranon osteotomy. There is interest in using arthroscopic techniques to aid with the uh, reduction and fixation, and many elbow surgeons agree that this is probably the best indication for arthroscopically assisted internal fixation. And of course, in steam situations, you can opt to remove the fragment if it's small and very comminuted, or in the patient that has uh, a more advanced stage and uh, low demand, as we talked about, for the distal humerus fractures in the very bad, unfixable fracture of the articular segment of the distal humerus, you can consider an elbow arthroplasty. So this is uh, an example of uh, an schematic of using the anterior interval of the lateral column procedure to perform fixation of the capitellum, and this typically is done in the supine position. And this is a study that uh, reports pretty good outcome in terms of uh, healing and lack of avascular and necrosis. And uh, by using the anterior aspect of the column procedure, uh, the LCL is completely unviolated. Now, in patients that have a more extensive fracture, so if the fracture is not just on the lateral column, 
but it goes all the way across the trochlea and as I mentioned sometimes even to the medial epicondyle then my preference is to use an olecranon osteotomy and again I do place the patients supine but if you have less assistance it's usual to place them lateral and you can see an example on your right where the osteotomy was fixed with a screw and a tension band and multiple screws were used to fix the fragments as you can see in this uh, interpretive photograph. And as I mentioned, this is probably one of the best indications for arthroscopy. So my preference is to do arthroscopy in the lateral equitus position, and this is an example of an arthroscopy you can see on your right. And sometimes if you're going to do this complex arthroscopic work, it is usual to have both a 30-degree scope and a 70-degree scope. And the technique typically involves using both fluoroscopy and arthroscopy. Once the fracture is reduced, it's actually self-stable. So the key is to get it reduced. Once it's in, keeping the elbow flexed, as you can see on the picture on the lower right, then the radial head will act as a compressive force and keep your reduction. And then you can use um, screws from the posterior aspect of the uh, humerus and provide great fixation uh, of the uh, fracture, the fragment. This is a 55-year-old male that presents with the radial graft that we will look at uh, next. He fell off a bike and then his examination shows that he only has an elbow injury. He is neurosquarely intact and this is the injury. So you can see how this is a great example of a complex articular shear fracture that involves the capitellum and a little bit of the trochlea. So even if we fix it, of those five options, what do you think will be the most common complication statistically? elbow flexion contractures. As we talked about before, even with proper treatment, for whatever reason, these fractures have a higher rate of a stiffness than expected. So here you can see the complications of capitellum fractures. The most common is the elbow contracture or stiffness. There is some non-union or AVM possible, and also HO formation can occur in some patients. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.